that don't know me, my name is Marcos Gonzalez. Hello. How's it, everybody? I work here at the church. I work operations, and I'm also the junior high director, along with my wife, Thais. She was just up here singing worship. Um, we have been in youth ministry for over, I mean, close to six, seven years now. I've known most of you since you were, like, probably a little bit in middle school and then into high school. I've known some of you since you've been in elementary, and now you're making your way up here. I've known you guys for a while. In my time here, there has been a lot of key things that I have learned. And I'm sure you can say the same thing. There's been a lot of things that you've learned. But at some point in time, it all feels kind of repetitious. We show up on a Wednesday. We show up on a Sunday. 7 o'clock service. We'll have worship. Maybe we'll be outside. Maybe we won't. How many of you guys thought we were going to be outside today? Oh, okay. That's not bad. I like that split. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We all know summer's coming to a close. Shameless plug. Get to the summer bash. You're going to love it. It's going to be awesome this Friday. Six o'clock, be here. But who in here can tell me what we've been talking about this month? Brody. Bear fruit. Okay. Okay. Bear fruit. You've been hearing it all month long, pretty much. We're like in week three now. Bear fruit. Can somebody tell me what they've learned from the series Bear Fruit? Brody. That's good. If you sow bad fruit, you get bad fruit. If you sow good fruit, you reap good fruit. Yes, Chris. Come on now. Don't fake your fruits, Bryant. Come on now. I'm about to just hand the mic over to Bryant and just let him preach. That's what I'm about to do. James, you had your hand raised as well. What'd you, what have you learned this month so far with bare fruit? Don't only focus on one fruit. Okay. Okay. I'll take one more. Can I have a lady answer the question? Any, any ladies in the room that would like to answer the question that have said what they've learned? I want, I, want, I want a young lady to actually be confident in the answer that she's about to give, not yes. Yes. Yes, amen. Most fruit trees take years before they start to produce fruit. From the time you put them in the ground when they're little saplings to the time they grow up. How many of you guys were here when uh, Anna Pace was talking about her cherry tree, right? Yeah, she was talking about her cherry tree, and it didn't come overnight. It took some time and some dedication. Uh, a couple Sundays ago, if I'm not mistaken. Or a Wednesday, something like that. Two to three Wednesdays ago, give or take, we're here, right? Okay, so with that being said, how many of you guys are taking notes? How many of you guys are taking notes? How many of you guys want material to take notes? Okay, I believe we have the materials in the back, so if we can have the, uh, the materials handed out. All right, so I have questions for you guys. Do any of you guys, while they're handing out this stuff, I have a question for you. Listen to this, listen to this. How many of you guys fully, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, understand what it means to bear fruit? Okay. One, two. Like not, like, not doubting whatsoever. I know what it is to bear fruit. I can stand up here right now and preach a sermon on bearing fruit. Chris? Oh, okay. Now we had a little bit. Either, either I said 100% without a shadow of a doubt. Now a little bit. Okay, we ain't there yet. All right, that's perfectly fine. Okay, who has a question in regards to bearing fruit? Like, you've been hearing about bearing fruit all month long, whatever the case may be, and now you're at a point where you're just like, man, you know what? I have some questions about bearing fruit, and I, out of everyone that I've heard speak, no one's really touched on this point. Has, any, has anybody have any question like that? Brian, you have a question like that, or are you waiting for pen and paper? 
you have a question. Okay. 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 Okay, so what it sounds like to me is your question is, why is it that if I've taken all the necessary steps to obtain this fruit of joy, why do I still feel sad and depressed and hurting, right? Is that what you're getting? Okay, I'm going to put a pin in that. Does anybody else have a, have a question that they haven't heard answered? Like, I had this question about bearing fruit, and I just haven't understood it yet. Yes, Chris. Say that again. Okay, okay. I get, understand what you're saying there. Yes, Nehemiah, you had your hand raised. What does it look like to bear fruit? Okay, that's good. Does anybody else have a question? Does everybody have a pen and paper? Yes, those that are taking notes, not on their phone, and you have a pen and paper, you good? Okay. Okay, so for Brian's question, let's take this into consideration. How many of you guys desire? Check, check. There you go. How many of you guys desire to have joy? Right? Everyone in the room. Everyone should desire to have joy. Absolutely. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Why would we not want it? So, how is it that someone who consistently and persistently is seeking the face of God, praying for this joy, and putting themselves in a position to try and receive this and saying, haven't found it yet. How many of you guys have ever prayed for something and consist consistently looked for it, waiting for an answer, and it still hasn't shown up? Okay. I'm going to flip the script on you now, but stay with me. What if I told you you're looking in all the wrong places? Okay. Okay. What if I told you the joy you're looking for doesn't come in the place? I'm not saying the person, the person God. It will come from him, but not in the place and space that you think it should be packaged in. Right? Because I get joy from playing video games with my, with my guys, right? We've been on this golf kick lately. I'm, I kid you not. We've been on this golf kick lately. We're playing PGA Tour um, 23 on the PlayStation. And we are just... <laughs> yep, that's a good shot, buddy. Look at that. Look at the way that thing goes, right? That brings me joy. Do you believe that that's the only joy that God wants me to feel? No? Okay, why not? Wait, he said it right there. Why? Because that's temporary. It's only going to last for 18 holes or until my controller dies, and I got to charge the bad boy, and I can't play anymore. Right? A controller? Hey, I said stay with me, man. You're not staying with me. Okay? Now, let me ask you this. Everyone here, take a breath in. And let the breath out. And take another breath in. And let another breath out. Okay. You just took two breaths, okay? The whole pursuit of the breath, the inhale and the exhale. 
two breaths. Okay? Stay with me. If, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard this before, if you still have breath in your lungs, then God's not done with you yet. How many of you guys have heard that before? How many of you guys have not heard that before? If you still have breath in your lungs, God's not done with you yet. Therefore, now let me ask you this question. How many of you guys are going through struggles right now? Whatever type of struggles. Just struggles, whether it be personal struggles, family struggles, friendship struggles, boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship struggles, whatever the case may be. Right? Okay. Struggles. Even in the midst of your struggles, God is still giving you breath in your lungs because he's not done with you yet. Can I present this to you? Is that not a reason to feel joy? Right? Nathan, what do you think? Is that or is that not a reason to feel joy? The fact that I have breath in my lungs and I know that God's not done with me yet, is that a reason to know that I can have joy? It's a promise that God has given me. Right? Bryant, you following me? So because the joy is not showing up in places that you feel like it needs to be showing up, that doesn't mean that you don't have a reason to feel joy. It doesn't mean that you don't have a reason to be joyful. Yes. Correct. If he has called you to the resting place, then he has completed his purpose for you on this earth in your earth suit. Because how many of you know that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you will actually never die? You will just exit out of your earth suit and go into your eternal body, into the place where he dwells. Okay? Now I understand when you say, well, man... That's kind of a little dark because, you know, sometimes babies die right away and stuff like that. And kids leave, you know, at, at an early age and stuff like that happens. So you're telling me that that 8-year-old or that 16-year-old or that 27-year-old, God already designed their purpose to end there? Listen, only God knows the amount of days that we're going to be here on this earth. I can't look at Olivia and be like, you're going to live to be 130 Solid, right? Solid, right? But guess what? My words mean nothing because I'm not God. Right? So here's why. I've seen funerals for eight-month-olds. I've seen funerals for 97-year-olds. I've seen funerals for... 32-year-olds. But every single time I see them, I see them here in the house of God. So meaning that, and, and you have to understand, when someone passes, everyone shows up. Even the people who don't believe and are a part of that family and connected to that family will show up to the church meaning that that's an open door for God to introduce himself to them. Can we stand in agreement with that? Okay. So, Bryant, we're going to talk afterwards. Cool? Okay. Chris, you had a question in regards to how do I add the repertoire or the, or the tool of consistently praying to God, right? So that way I can get to the point where I can start asking him for fruit. Right? Okay. Here's my encouragement to those of you who want to add prayer to your repertoire. Some of you are bookworms, and I completely understand that. I'm not a bookworm myself. I don't like reading books. I'd rather play the video games and go into the digital space, watch a video or something like that. Some of you guys love books. Have any, has any of you guys read a good book this, this year? Okay. Vanessa, what book have you read this year? The Bible. Okay. Can someone give me an answer besides the Bible? Yes, Cody. The Da Vinci Code. Okay, James. The Left Behind series. Okay, yes. 
I survived the Titanic. Okay, yes. The Happy Birthday Book by Dr. Seuss. Okay, yes. The entire Twilight series. So then therein begs the question, Miss Janaya, Team Edward. Look, I only had to say it once. I only had to say it once. <laughs> Y'all wildly. Y'all shouldn't be watching those movies. They're bad for you. They're bad for you. Don't watch them. Okay. All right, let's reel it in. Let's reel it in. Let's reel it in. So for those of you who want to add prayer consistently to your repertoire, the same way that you consistently pursue the things that you find enjoyment in, you have to create that consistency within your daily life as well, right? How many of you guys know how long it takes to create a habit? That's an addiction. Yes. Thirty-one days to create a habit. How many of you know how long it takes to break a habit? Too many days. Three weeks. I believe. Sci I believe scientifically, it's actually shorter to break a habit than it is to create a habit. Am I right, Colton? Or is that in reverse? I think it's flip-flop. Yeah. Listen, we're not perfect here. I'm not a scientist. Okay. What I'm trying to get at is consistency is going to be your best friend. Okay. How many people play sports? Some type of sport? Okay. How are you going to get good at the sport if you don't practice? How are you going to get good at the sport if you only practice once a year? Right? That does not sound like consistency in any way, shape, or form. Okay. All right, let's reel it in. Let's reel it in. Consistency is going to be your best friend. Okay? So for those of you who want to add the repertoire of what prayer, of getting in, in the, the consecutive rhythm of praying day in, day out, you need to create a rhythm of consistency. Here's what that looks like. You wake up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Boom. That's a prayer. You getting yourself ready for the day? You know you got a test coming up? Lord, I got this test coming up today, and I'm, I'm really nervous because I didn't study for it. But you know what, God? You're going to be with me because if I get another C, it's not going to be good for me. Okay? I read Dr. Seuss, you guys. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? All right. I'm not judging you. I have two kids of my own. How can I judge? And then I have all of you. I got plenty of kids. All right, listen. Let's reel it in. Look at your neighbor and say, stay focused. Look at your neighbor and say, listen up. Okay. Nehemiah had a question. Nehemiah, can you refresh me with your question, please? What does it look like to bear fruit? Okay. What does it look like to bear fruit? Can someone in their best words describe to me what it looks like when someone bears fruit? Someone besides the three guys that have been talking this whole entire time. Yes. The Lord loves confidence, so just let it go. Like joy and happiness? Like they stopped being angry? Like you knew that person was angry over and over and over again, and even if they, like, stubbed their toe on ice cream, they would scream out? Right? You would have to be some type of angry to stub your toe on ice cream and still shout. Okay? Yes, Janiah. How can... Listen up. So Janiah is going to tell us what it looks like for someone who is bearing fruit. Yes.
Mm -hmm. I can give you the perfect analogy for that, too, what it looks like for someone to bear fruit. Because she, could, because she said, no, regardless of what's happening around you, it doesn't change what's, with what's in you. Okay? Take a ship, for instance. A boat. The boat stays buoyant on the water. Correct? Now, if I get a hole on the bottom of the boat, what starts to happen to the boat? It sinks. Why does it sink? Why does it sink? Water gets where? Into it, right? So the boat doesn't sink just because the boat is sinking. The boat only sinks because of what's getting inside of it. Meaning that if you bear fruit and in the fruit of the Lord, regardless of the circumstances that are around you, the fruit that with, that's within you, nothing that happens outside of you can drag you down. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. One of the greatest commandments that Jesus tells us in the Bible is to love your neighbor as yourself. How easy is that to do? Because I know some people in my lifetime, they frustrated me, and it was difficult for me to love them as I love myself. I'll do anything for me and do anything for them. It's, it's not that easy. So here, as we wrap up tonight, I want to leave you guys with this. If you were taking notes, I want you guys to write this on your paper. I want to label today's conversation as deceive me not. Okay? Deceive me not. And here's why. Because in the garden... When Adam and Eve were in the garden and the serpent showed up and God gave them com the commandment of, out of every single fruit that you see out here, you can have, except for which fruit? The one in the middle, but which one was the one in the middle called? The fruit of knowledge. Uh-huh. What is it? The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, you can have all the fruit. You can have the pineapples, the strawberries, the apples, the oranges. You can have the papyrus plant. You can have the cherries. You can have whatever it is that you want. There's still fruits out there that they're discovering, so I can't name all of them. Um, but he said, out of all the fruits that are out there, those are good for you. Just don't have this one. Just don't have this one right here, okay? What did the enemy come in and do? There you go. Someone's, someone's, someone's staying with me. The enemy came in and deceived. Reel it in, you guys. Come on, we're almost done. Home stretch. The enemy came in and deceived Eve to take from the tree and to eat of the fruit. That God told her not. And what did he say? She said, God told us not to eat from this because we will. Yeah. And what does the enemy say? He said, did God really say that? Does God really want you to have joy? Does God really want you to have peace? Does God really want you to experience love? Does God really want you to have all the fruits of the Spirit? Come on now. Chris got it. Because what? We said deceive me not. 
you can, as much as God is fully aware of all the fruit that's on the earth, guess who also is fully aware of the fruit that's on the earth? The devil. He's fully aware of all the fruit that's on the earth. So if God created the fruit and the deceiver knows how to deceive, there is a place and space that he will try to weave himself in in your life to deceive you on what fruit you can't and can't have. So, as I leave you guys today, Remember this, you let that enemy know, deceive me not, because I know all the fruit that the Lord wants for me. And you can read that, all about that fruit in the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, and I believe it's chapter five, and you can read it there. If we can put, can you put that verse up that has all the fruits of the Spirit? There you go. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Okay? So whenever the enemy tries to take these fruits away from you, and he says, does God really want you to have this fruit right now? You let him know. Deceive me not. Because if I have all these fruits, then I'm closer and closer to being like my best friend, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. My Lord and my Father, God, I thank you for this opportunity that you have brought us to. I thank you for all your sons and daughters that are here in this room right now. I pray that you watch over them, that you keep them safe, that you remind them daily of all the fruits that they have access to, that as they seek your face daily, that you will start to produce and grow these fruits in their lives. And I thank you that they have the ability to not fall into a place of repetition, of feeling like this is just something that's happening over and over and over again, but endurance and consistency produces great fruit. So we thank you that we have the ability to gather here as your sons and daughters, to be in your presence, to hear your word, and to know more and more of you. So we thank you, we praise you, we give you all glory and honor. Be with your sons and daughters as they go about the rest of this week. In your mighty name we pray, amen.